let's try number eight. <laughs> I cut and paste this, so it's a bit out of order. Um, we're going to start by marking this information in the picture. So if KM is perpendicular to JL, I can mark that this is a right angle. And that also means it's a right angle on that side. It also tells us that JK is congruent to LK. And we need to prove that those two triangles are congruent. Okay, so I marked the given information. Then I should ask myself if there's anything else I can mark. And in this one, they share a side, so I can mark that that is congruent as well. Okay, so which of the theorems can we use to prove these two triangles are congruent? I see two sides and an angle. Of those five theorems, the only one that had two S's and an A. Let me write them out real quick. The only one that has two S's for sides and one angle is this one. But that one says the angle has to be between the two sides. And if I put my finger, each finger, on one of these two, the angle that's between these two fingers is this one up here. So this is not a picture of SAS. But since it's a right triangle, I can use HL. So I need to check if that one will work. So remember to find if the hypotenuse is marked, you draw an arrow starting at the right angle. It's pointing at the hypotenuse. So I do have that the hypotenuses are congruent, and the leg is just any other side of the right triangle. So this is a, um, a leg right here. So we can use HL. So this one's a little different because I know it's only two letters. There's still three things you have to prove. You have to prove that the hypotenuses are congruent, the legs are congruent, and you also have to prove that it's a right triangle. So I'm going to write HL and then draw a little right triangle. That's my to-do list of the three things that I need in the proof. So looking at the given information that I already have in the proof, this doesn't say anything's congruent. This part says JK is congruent to KL. Well, those were the hypotenuses. Is that the plural? Hypotenai? I'm not sure. Okay, so that one, we've got that done. So now the way I knew that the other side was congruent was with the reflexive property. So you have to say outright KM is congruent to KM. It's like looking in a mirror. There's some the same thing on both sides of that congruent side. So this is the reflexive property. Okay. So now I can cross off the L. Now I need to say that it's a right triangle. So the way we knew it was a right triangle is because these um, two uh, side lengths or two segments were perpendicular. So the definition of perpendicular is that it'll it's two segments that make right angles. So I need to say that these are right angles. So angle K, M, J and angle K, M, L are right angles. And that is the definition of perpendicular. Okay, so now I know that there's a right angle in each of the triangles, so I can say that they're both right triangles, because that's what it means to be a right triangle. It has one right angle. So triangle KMJ and triangle KML are right triangles. That would be the definition of a right triangle. Okay, so I have put in the proof that we have right triangles. Oops, so I can cross off the third thing I need have in my to-do list. Everything's crossed off, so I can write the proof statement. Triangle JKM is congruent to triangle LKM, and my reason is HL. Okay, that's it for that one.